Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going over attributes. It seems like we've definitely got something going on with the showering before video recording. But today we are going to be going over attributes and not just attributes on mobs or players of the sort. We've already covered that in previous videos. Instead what we're going to be doing is covering the attributes on items which are a little more complex than the other attributes which makes them require their own tutorial but they're still really pretty simple. Let's get straight into it. We are not going to need to do any in-game setup today because attributes can be made fully with modding. So I'm just going to open up a world. In fact, I'm just going to open up the tutorial world that we have been using, specifically this one here. And I'm going to use my player as a spot to make these items just because they'll spawn right in my inventory and I don't have to go get them or anything. So I'm going to double click on my player data to open up my player data. And we're just going to put these in my inventory. I'm going to clear out the items we have already. I'm just going to get those deleted and I'm going to get a new item into my inventory. So I'm going to put an item right here. Uh, for this example, I want to do a sword. So I'm just going to get an iron sword. I also want to do some armor. So why don't we get a leather helmet out? So there we go. I've got a little leather helmet right there. And I also want to do an arrow. These are the three items that we are going to be attributing in this tutorial. So we've got our three items here and there are actually two different ways that we can get our attributes made. One of them is to physically go into the item and build an attribute with tags ourselves. The other way is to copy an already existing attribute and in this case I actually do have an attribute template already made. This will be in the description so if you just want to copy all of these numbers that will be in the description and then come into an item here and first thing we need to do is make sure that this item has a tag. For example if the item has been enchanted you'll see that this little tag compound already exists but if it hasn't you need to make a compound and just call it tag all lowercase then while selecting this tag you need to paste in all of those numbers and as you can see we get this thing called attribute modifiers once again you could build this yourself if you wanted to like make a list called attribute modifiers and then put another compound in right here uh, you could go through and build all of these in but if you do want to just copy the template it is in the description so there are five different parts of this attribute right here all of which are actually very important when making the attribute and the first one is going to be what the attribute actually is. Now, Universal Minecraft Editor actually does us a favor and it tells us what it is right up here when we change the ID, which is super, super nice. So ID one is gonna be maximum health, which is the maximum amount of health that a mob can generate up to. Attribute one is going to be the follow range. Uh, this won't really work with items because it's an attribute for mobs only. Attribute two is going to be knockback resistance. This is, well, how much you resist knockback. Attribute three is gonna be movement speed. Attribute four is going to be attack damage. Attribute 5 is going to be horse jump strength. Don't worry about that one. It's nothing that you can use on an item. Attribute 6 is going to be zombie spawn reinforcements. Also don't worry about that. Attribute 7 is going to be attack speed. This is also something you cannot worry about. Attribute 8 is going to be armor. This is one you might want to worry about. Attribute 9 is going to be the armor toughness. And as far as I know, armor toughness doesn't work on Wii U, but I haven't specifically gone into like trial and error testing it. I think there's armor toughness on diamond armor, but I'm not sure since it's legacy console and it's it's a really weird spot for if armor toughness should exist or not. But when I've put it on items in the past, it doesn't show up as an attribute. It just sort of shows up as broken. So I'd steer away from that one. Attribute 10 is going to be luck. This has the exact same problem that I have with armor toughness. It just sort of shows up broken when I try to use it. Attribute 11 is nothing because there are only... So let's actually just go through and use some of these. So for example, on this sword, I'm going to add an attack damage modifier which is going to be id4 and let's go from there so we're going to skip over operation for now because it's relatively complicated we're also going to skip uuid for now and we're going to skip over amount and we're just going to start working up from the bottom basically so this right here this slot determines which slot the attribute will work in there are six different slots you need to know and if you forget them the attribute will break and stop working and you won't see it so the main hand means it will work when i'm holding it in my main hand if i do offhand that means it'll only work if i'm holding it in my offhand. Only some items can be held in the offhand though. If I do feet, that will mean that it works when I'm wearing it on my feet. If I do legs, that means it'll work when I'm wearing it on my legs. If I do chest, it will work on like your chest when you're wearing it on your chest. And if you do head, it will work on your head. Those are the six slots you need to know. Because this sword is going to be in my main hand, I cannot physically hold it in my offhand and I cannot physically put it on my body. It does have to be on main hand. You can also omit this entirely, so if I wanted to delete this, it would work in any slot at all, but I would recommend having a slot, capital S, uh, and just making sure that it only works where it's supposed to. From there, we can change the amount of the attribute. This is sort of dependent on our operation, so let's go over the operation right now. So. This operation zero is going to be the most simplistic one. It's going to add a direct number. So if I have this on operation zero and I have the amount as one, it will add, like, and this is uh, attack damage, it will add plus one attack damage. 
if I do two, it will add plus two attack damage. I can do like 2.25 and it will add 2.25 attack damage. It's very simple in that way, where it's just directly the exact number here. I'm going to change this to three for now. If I put this on operation one, it's going to be a percentage. And this is going to be a bit more confusing. And I'll explain when we're in game how it's useful though. This is going to take this number as a percentage. So imagine this number like a value of 100. So it would be like 300. And then we put a percent at the end. So it would be like 300% uh, speed uh, is what it's going to add. So you can, of course, change with this with decimal. So I could be like 3.25 as well. Or I could go to just 0.25. And that's going to be 25%. You know what I mean? That's, it goes through the percentages there. And let's just change this back to 3 again. If we change the operation to operation 2, uh, it is a little bit different than operation one. Uh, it's sort of complex exactly how it's different. Essentially, when I if I have multiple attributes, so I can like take this compound right here, go into attribute modifiers and paste another one. And if I have mo multiple attribute modifiers that are the same thing and they're all operation two, then uh, these two mo modifiers when I am using operation two would multiply together. So it'd be like uh, three times three, that's nine. But if these are both operation one, instead of multiplying, they'll just add. So this would be like uh, three plus three, which is six. But really you should probably only worry about having the operation one and zero. I would just ignore operation two. Now I really want to get in game and show you guys what's going on because it's really quite complicated just looking at the numbers. But what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna generate another sword here. So I've just copied the exact sword I have up there. I'm gonna move it up, change the slot. This is all normal inventory editing stuff. And I'm going to go into this attribute here and I want to keep it as the exact same attribute, but I'm going to change this top one up here to operation zero. So just so we can see the difference between those two operations, same number, same everything, but operation zero instead of one. Now, one other thing to know is that the UUID of every item must be different. If an, if two items share a UUID, they're going to sort of break and like not work and, or they're like trying to use multiple attributes at the same time, it'll just break down. So make sure that your attribute is always different from the last one. And these can just be numbers. I would have like a text document or something where you store the exact number of attributes that you have and count up. So this one will be zero. So the next one has to be one. And you could just keep counting up as you get more attributes and just make sure that the UUID of every attribute is always different. But once we've done that, let's get into game. So once we are in game here, we can actually see these two different attributes. I'm just going to move the helmet and the arrow out of the way here so we can see the two different um, swords here. So this first one was the Operation Zero, where it literally just gives me plus three attack damage. And this one over here is going to be that 300% attack damage. That's because I used the Operation One instead of Zero. Now I have just went off of camera really quick and changed these to speed because it's going to be a little bit of an easier visible effect when I use these. So I'm going to go over and hold my plus three speed sword. And as you can see, when I walk around, I'm really, really fast. I'm barely, barely touching the controls right now. I'm walking really fast. But if I go over to the 300% one right here, you're going to see that my speed increase is a lot less. This is why operation in zero should be managed carefully. Essentially, this percentage modifier works with the relativity of the base values. What that means is if my base speed on my player is 0.2, for example, it's not, but for example, it was 0.2, I would be multiplying that 0.2 times 3, and 0.2 times 3 is 0.6. You know what I mean? So I've, I've still gotten three times the speed I had because I'm multiplying it by the, that three times, but it's using my base value as a very relative and easy point. For example, on this one, which is speed three though, it doesn't take into account what the base value is. Yes, it adds three speed to the base value, but it doesn't matter what that base value is, which means that if my base value is something really small like 0.2, I have way, way, way more than three times my 0.2 original speed. In fact, I would have 15 times my original speed. And that's how these are important. The percentage value the operation one will always take in the relativity of the base value. You can sort of trial and error and use that relative value if you'd like to, or you can just add direct values. Direct values are great 
for things like attack damage, which you just might want to change the damage on your sword to do a specific ta attack damage. But they're not so great for something like speed, because even adding one speed is really, really fast. So it's a good idea to vary between the operations depending on what your goal is. Another thing I want to mention while we're here right now is that, as you can see, uh, my iron sword no longer does five damage because the attribute has overridden what the sword does and turned it into just that attribute. In fact, when you add attributes to a sword at all, as you can see the 300% speed here, the iron sword no longer shows how much damage it does. And that's because we have literally stopped the iron sword from doing any damage by giving it this attribute. So if I attack this creeper, I would normally be doing five damage, I could kill this creeper in four hits, but I'm gonna just keep hitting this thing and it's not gonna work very well because I'm basically hitting the creeper with my fist. This iron sword doesn't do any damage, it does speed, it's, a, it's not a damage thing. So when you use these attributes, you also have to be careful of how that's affecting the base item that you already have. So going back into the editor really quick, I'm basically just going to have fun with a few different attributes as examples here. So this sword, we're going to turn it back to attack damage, so it's going to be an attack of 4. Why don't we keep it as operation 0, because we do just want to add direct damage. Uh, the UUID is going to start as 0 on this one. The amount, I want this iron sword to actually do 12 damage. Then I'm going to make sure I get this attribute copied. I'm just going to copy the tag since I know one of my other items have them already. So I'm going to get this in here, open up my attribute, and in fact I want this helmet to give me max health. So I'm going to change this to IZ0. I do want a specific value of max health, so operation 0. I always got to make sure I change that UUID, and I want this helmet to give me an extra 10 health on my head, so I need to change the slot that it works on. Then I'm going to go to my arrow, and I'm going to paste in the attribute again, opening it up here. And this time I want to give myself some movement speed. I'm going to do percentage because I do like relativity with my movement speed, so we're going to choose operation 1. UUID always has to go up, so it's going to be 2 on this one. And I want this to give me 2 220% speed. And this is not going to work in my main hand. I actually want this to only work in my off hand. So I'm going to put it in the off hand slot. Let's just get these changes saved in and I'll show these as examples. So I have just loaded into the world and as you can see my sword does 12 attack damage. My helmet has 10 max health. Why don't we put that on? And my arrow does 220% speed. Now as you can see if I hold it in my main hand here it's not going to work because it was set to only work when it's in my off hand. And now you can see the speed has gone into effect. I'm going to fight some stuff with my uh, weapons though. And one big thing I want to talk about is that people always complain to me, I can't see my max health. My max health isn't working uh, when even though I'm wearing this helmet. First off, the max health is not shown in extra hearts. You cannot see the max health showing up. It's just something about Legacy Console Edition where it will not show up. But you can see that it's there because you can tell when you are regening. So as an example, I've grabbed this regen pot from Creative. I'm going to throw it on myself. And if you look down at my hearts there, you can see when it flashes white, I am regenerating hearts right now. And that's because max health is not my health. I touched on this in the spawners video as well. The max health simply changes the maximum amount of health that I can regenerate into, the maximum health that I can have, but it doesn't change the health that I do actually have. So to get into your max health, you need to regen into it. So that's why I've got these health potions on the right of my inventory here, so I can throw these down and regen into my max health. Another way that we can see that it is there is if I spawn one of these spiders I have handy dandily right here, you can see that when the spider attacks me, it's going to hurt me, but I'm not going to seemingly take any damage if it ever attacks me. There it goes. Uh, you see, it doesn't seem like I'm taking any damage, and that's because it's coming out of my max health right now. We have enough health where it's just coming out of that max. It's that 12, and now the spider starts damaging me because now it's broken through my max health, and I could regenerate back into that. So why don't we get back to my sword, which does 12 attack damage, and that will take two hits to kill the spider because the spider has 20 health. And there we go. We've killed the spider with that sword right there, and the helmet has taken a little bit of damage, but it has supplied me with that max health. I hope that these were some good examples of attributes. But with that, it does mean we are wrapping up the tutorial. This, I hope this tutorial was relatively simple, although it's definitely needed because attributes do have some of those like sort of complicated number things that we went through. But I hope you could take something out of this video and you can now make some cool attributed items. If you're looking for any other tutorials for Minecraft modding, specifically Wii U here, you can check out the playlist right over here. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments. Have a good day, folks.